Okay, so the Arduino Uno now has a display, the LED matrix display made from 12 by 8 LEDs. And if I restart the Arduino board, you will see the startup sequence of the Tetris-like pieces filling the screen and forming the heart icon. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to use this display to show all kinds of information and of course some nice looking animations. For example, the animated Arduino logo, some loading animations like the arrows or maybe a circle, all kinds of indicators like battery or maybe signal strength or volume, or maybe some warning icon. This one actually has quite a lot of frames, but it could be very useful if you are trying to visualize some kind of problem. Then I have some simple ones like lock icon, checkbox, or some music visualizer. Now before we start, let me clarify one thing, and that is this display is only present on the Arduino Uno R4 Wi-Fi. You will not find it on the non-Wi-Fi board, which is called Arduino Uno R4 Minima. And with that said, let's get started. There is a very nice documentation on the Arduino website on how to control the LED matrix, and all we have to do is to include the library, then define the matrix object and call the begin function. So let's actually jump to Arduino IDE and do that. So I will copy this line of code, also this line of code, and then the begin function inside the setup. Now if I scroll down, there is an example how to set the individual LEDs, so I will just copy this frame variable into our sketch, and then I will copy this matrix render bitmap into our loop function. And that should be hopefully enough to show something on the display, so I will select the correct board, which is the R4 Wi-Fi, and then upload it to the board. And we can indeed see the heart icon on the LED matrix display. So that was quite simple, right? Going back to the documentation, it says that this is the not the best way how to store those individual pixels, because we are storing each individual LED as one byte, while the LED could be only on and off, so only two states, so we are wasting a lot of memory this way. So scrolling down, there is another example of storing those individual LEDs as long variables, and if you take this number and convert it to binary format, you will get zeros and ones, and they actually correspond to the zeros and ones of those LEDs. Now this is obviously saving memory, but what I don't like about this solution is that we are using using free variables, so free long variables, to store 8 lines of LEDs. So even if you look at the binary notation, it's still impossible to visualize what will be the icon. You have to manually split those into 8 different lines to see that this will be the heart icon. There is also this hint saying that if you search for the number 1, it will be easier to see the image, which I guess is true. It also makes it obvious that you cannot see the image from those free lines of long variables. Thankfully there is a tool that simplifies things a lot and that's called the LED matrix editor. So if I open it, you can see that I can use my mouse to control those individual LEDs, those individual pixels and draw some images. And not only that, I can also create some simple animations by creating a new frame and then drawing something in here. And maybe one more. And maybe actually a few more. And then I can use this play button to show me the animation. And once I'm happy with the result, I can click this code icon to download the C arrays. And not only I have those three lines of variables for those individual pixels, I also have some kind of timing information, so I guess this number could be used to set the time for individual frames. And while this is all great, it might be surprising that I will be using a different animation editor to create those animations. Because just recently I've published a video about LED badges, and I've used the online sprite editor called Piskel, which I really liked. It's a free online sprite editor with quite a lot of functions. So the first thing we want to do is to jump to the resize tab and in here select the size of 12 by 8 pixels which is the resolution of the LED matrix display on the Arduino Uno and click the resize button. I will most likely change the color to be white because it's more visible and I can keep the background color to be transparent. This way if I use the pencil tool I can draw white pixels with my left mouse button and if I use the right mouse button I will delete those pixels actually drawing with the transparent color. So I don't need to switch between the pencil tool and the eraser tool all the time. Let's create some simple animation, for example the Arduino logo. And to keep things simple I will start with drawing the logo, this infinite loop. So maybe something like this and then it should connect in the middle, like so. And to make it animated I will basically just keep deleting parts of this logo in a way that it will form the animation. So I will hover over this frame and click this duplicate this frame button and jump to the previous frame because this one will be the last one in the animation and maybe delete this pixel. And immediately as I do this, you will see an animated preview on the right side showing this kind of small animation. So let's continue like this. I will duplicate this one more time, jump to the previous frame and maybe delete those two pixels. 
and you can see that those two pixels are semi-transparent because I have the onion skinning turned on, which shows me the content of the previous and next frame, which makes creating the animations easier, but it's not that much helpful in this case. So I'll continue like this, I will duplicate this frame, and now maybe delete more of those pixels, so for example like this, and do one big jump like here, so delete those two pixels, and then I should slow down, so maybe delete only those two, or five, maybe delete those three, duplicate this frame, previous frame, delete two, and finally delete this one pixel. And you can see on the right side, we have a nice looking reveal animation of this infinite loop. You can change the playback speed to play it slower, or maybe play it faster, but I think that something around those 12 default FPS looks nice. Also, I would like this last frame to stay for a little longer, so I can either do this in the code, or I can just duplicate this last frame a few more times, and that way it will stay on the last frame for a longer time. And I think that something like this looks nice, so let's export it. I will click the save icon and give it some meaningful name. And then I will click the export icon and click the others formats, because I want to export this as a C file, so click the download C file and it should download the C file. And if I open it, you can see that we have all those individual values for the individual pixels, but those are stored as RGBA values. We only want the zeros and ones, so what I will do is I will just replace 0x0000 with just 0, and then the FFFFF with 1. And as I select the number 1, it will highlight me all the occurrences, so I can see the animation inside this array. So I think that this should be enough to be used inside our Arduino sketch. Let's copy the array into our Arduino code and let's just set the type to be byte instead of integer and we can keep the name. Now this is a 2D array but the first dimension are those individual frames and the second dimensions are those individual pixels whereas our frame is also the 2D array but those dimensions are x and y values. So before we can show the pixel animation we need to convert it to the right format and for that let's create two more variables. One will be the integer type of the frame current and let's just set it to zero and the other variable will be also integer and this time it will be frame max which will be the maximum number of frames. In our case it's 14, you can see it up here so this is the first dimension it's up to 14. You can also see it in the pixel application. If I scroll down we have total of 14 frames. So what I'll do is I will still display the content of the frame array, but before I do so, I will populate those pixels using the values from the other array. So inside our loop, I will increase the current frame by calling frame current plus plus, and if the frame current is bigger than the frame max, actually bigger or equal, I will reset it back to zero, so the frame current should be zero. Now let's set the content of the frame array based on the content of our pixel array, and for that we will create two loops. The first one will be for the x value, so integer x equals zero, while the x is smaller than 12, which is the number of pixels in the horizontal direction, I will increase x, and I will copy it one more time for the y values, so integer y that should go between zero and eight, and then we want to set the content of array frame, but you can see that the first value is 8 and the second value is 12, which means that we should use y value for the first index and x value for the second index, and we should use the content of our array which is called r4 nm infinite loop data. Now in this case the first index will be the current frame, so frame current will be the first index, and the second index will be the pixel index, which we can calculate as y times 12 plus x. We probably don't need brackets, but I will put those down in here anyway. And that's pretty much all that's needed, but this loop will run as fast as possible, which will most likely be too fast for us. So what I will do is I will add a small delay, and the delay is in milliseconds. So if you want to get, for example, 20 frames per second, we will say 1000 divided by 20, which is of course 50 milliseconds for each frame. So let's upload this to Arduino and see how it looks like. And I think it looks great. It's probably a little bit faster than it needs to be, so you can slow it down inside the Arduino code, or maybe add more frames inside the Pisco application and then export it again. At this point, it's really up to you what you want to do with those animations. If you create your own animations, I would love to see them, so please put the link in the comments of this video. If you have any questions or comments, please put those down in the comment section as well. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you soon. Thanks and bye.